आई जी सी एस सी फिजिक्स पेपर टू वेरियंट टू मई जून टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू क्वेश्चन वन वेरी स्मॉल वैल्यूज ऑफ विच क्वान्टिटी आर मेजर यूजिंग अ माइक्रोमीटर स्क्रू गेज ऑप्शन ए टाइम टू कैलकुलेट टाइम वी यूज वॉच सो ए इज इन करेक्ट बी प्रेशर फॉर प्रेशर वी यूज बैरोमीटर सो बी इज ऑल्सो इन करेक्ट सी मोमेंट टू कैलकुलेट मोमेंट वी यूज अ मीटर रूल विद सम वेट सो सी इज ऑल्सो इन करेक्ट D distance yes it is correct we use micrometer screw gauge to find out to calculate precise measurement of very small object so our correct option will be option D question number 2 a man stands next to a railway track a train traveling at 40 meter per second takes 2 second to pass the man what is the length of the train Length of the train means here we have to find out the distance travelled by the train, and to find out distance travelled, we will use the formula distance is equal to velocity into time. Here velocity is given forty meter per second, time is given two second, so distance will be equal to forty multiplied by two is equal to eighty meters, and eighty meters is given in option D, so correct option will be option D. Question number three: Which quantity is equal to acceleration? Option A area under a distance time graph B area under a speed time graph C gradient of a distance time graph D gradient of a speed time graph Here correct option is option D gradient of a speed time graph When we plot a graph in between speed and time the gradient obtained is called acceleration So here correct option should be option D gradient of a speed time graph Question number four: On the moon, all objects fall with the same acceleration. Which statement explains this? Option A: On the moon, all objects have the same weight. It is incorrect. Weight depends on mass. With the increase in mass, weight will be increased. With the decrease in mass, weight will be decreased. So A is not the possible option. B: The moon has a smaller gravitational field strength than the Earth. Yes, it is correct, but it is not related to our question, so it is not our possible option. See the weight of an object is directly proportional to its mass. Yes, it is correct. Weight is directly proportional to its mass. With the increase in mass, weight will be increased. With the decrease in mass, weight will be decreased. So C is our correct option. Question number five: A measuring cylinder contains thirty centimeter cube of a liquid. Some more of the liquid is added until the liquid level reaches the fifty centimeter cube. Here we have added some liquid, and by adding the liquid, the new mark is fifty centimeter cube. Before it was thirty, new mark is fifty. So we have added here twenty centimeter cube of the liquid. The reading of the balance increases by thirty gram. What is the density of the liquid? To find out density of the liquid, we have a formula. Density is equal to mass over volume. Here mass is thirty gram. Whereas the increment in the volume is twenty centimeter cube, so just by substituting and solving, we will get the answer one point five gram per centimeter cube. And one point five gram per centimeter cube is given in C, so correct option will be option C. Question number six: An object moves at constant speed around a circular path. Which statement is correct? Option A: A resultant force X on the object outwards from the center of the circle when an object is moving in a circular path it is acted upon by a force that is directed towards the center of the circle and here in option a it is given outwards so this one is incorrect b a resultant force x on the object in the direction it is traveling it is also incorrect a resultant force x on the object towards the center of the circle yes it is correct So correct option will be option C. Question number seven: A beam is pivoted at one end as shown. The beam weighs six newton and its weight acts at a point x forty centimeter from the pivot. A force of four newton is applied to the beam, causing it to balance horizontally. In which direction and where is the four newton force applied? To find out the direction. and the point of action of the force we will use the formula clockwise moment is equal to anti clockwise moment 
Now because of this 6 Newton force, the moment will be clockwise and the value of this moment will be equal to 6 multiplied by 40 cm. Because moment is given as product of force and moment arm or force arm. Force arm or moment arm means the distance from the pivot to the point of line of action of the force. So clockwise moment will be equal to 6 multiplied by 40. What will be anti-clockwise moment? Anti-clockwise moment will be equal to this 4 Newton force multiplied by the distance x from the pivot. So here we have calculated the distance x, it is 60 cm. Now here we can say we have to apply a force of 4 Newton at a distance of 60 cm from this pivot. Or in other words we can say we have to apply a force of 4 Newton in the upper direction at a distance of 20 cm from this force. From the pivot total distance 60. From pivot to this 6 Newton force it is 40 cm. So definitely the distance from this point from this 6 Newton force to this 4 Newton force it will be 20 cm. So here we have to apply a force of 4 Newton in the upper direction at a distance of 20 cm to the right of this force 6 Newton. And if we check the options, same thing is given in the option D vertically upward at 20 cm to the right of this force X. So correct option will be option D. Question number 8 on the diagram shown what is the magnitude of the resultant force of the two vectors. Here we have to find out resultant of these two vectors of 3 Newton and of 4 Newton. Now to find out the resultant force, resultant vector, we have to draw a line that should be parallel and equal to this 4 Newton force from the head of this 3 Newton force. Again we will draw a line that should be parallel and equal to this 3 Newton force from the head of this 4 Newton force. Now this line in blue color it will represent the resultant vector and the magnitude of this resultant vector we can calculate by thus measuring it with the help of a ruler. Or uh, alternatively we can also calculate the value of R with the help of a formula R is equal to Rx square plus Ry square. This Rx is the horizontal component, this Ry is the vertical component. So just by substituting the values of Rx and Ry and by solving we will get the answer and the answer is 5 Newton. Now 5 Newton is given in B so correct option, option B. Question number 9 which statement describe the impulse acting on an object? First we check what is impulse. Impulse is given as product of force and time. Now force is given as mass into acceleration and acceleration is defined as rate of change of velocity or mathematically we can say V over T. Now here this T and T will be cancelled out and we will get MV. So here we can say impulse is equal to MV and MV is also called change in momentum or momentum. So simply we can say impulse means change in momentum. Now if we check the options, in option A it is given impulse is a change in kinetic energy. It is incorrect. In B it is given impulse is the change in momentum of the object. Yes it is correct. Here we have noticed that impulse is change in momentum of the object. So definitely correct option should be option B. Question number 9. A ball of mass 0.16 kg is moving forward at a speed of 0.5 m per second. A second ball of mass 0.1 kg is stationary. Two balls, one ball of 0.16 kg, second ball is 0.1. This 0.16 kg ball is moving with a speed of 0.5 m per second whereas this 0.1 kg ball is stationary. The first ball strikes the second ball. This first ball strikes the second ball. The second ball moves forward at a speed of 0.5 m per second. What is the speed of the first ball after the collision? We have to find out the final velocity of this ball 0.16 kg. Or we can say we have to find out the velocity of the ball 0.16 kg after collision. 
Now to find out the velocity of this ball 0.16 kg after collision, we will use the relation, we will use the formula momentum before collision is equal to momentum after collision. Now momentum is given as product of mass and velocity. In this case, in the case of 0.16 kg ball, what will be the momentum before collision? It will be equal to 0.16 multiplied by 0.5. And before the collision, momentum because of this ball will be equal to 0.1 multiplied by 0. After the collision, it will be equal to 0.16 multiplied by this velocity that we have to find out that is represented by alphabet X. And momentum after the collision of this ball 0.1 kilogram, it will be equal to 0.1 multiplied by 0.5. And by solving, we got the answer 0.1875. So here this ball 0.16 kg after collision is moving with a velocity of 0.1875 meters per second. Now if we check the option, the close value here it is given 0.19 meter per second that is approximately equal to 0.1875. So our correct option will be option B 0.19 meters per second. Question number 11, a tennis ball is dropped from position 1. Here we have position 1, from this position 1, this tennis ball is dropped. It falls vertically onto a hard surface at position 2. It moves down and it comes to position 2. Which energy changes have taken place between 1 and 2 position? When it was at position 1, it have gravitation potential energy. Now when the ball is moving in the downward direction, its gravitation potential energy was changing to kinetic energy. When it will strike with the floor, it will rebound. It will rebound means it will have elastic energy. So what is the what are the changes in the ball? What are the energy changes in the ball? First, it possesses gravitational potential energy that is converting to kinetic energy and this kinetic energy will be converted to elastic energy because of which the ball will rebound. Now if we check the option, same thing is given in option B, it possesses gravitational potential energy that is converting to kinetic energy, then it is converting to elastic energy. So our correct option will be option B. Question number 12, a boy holds onto a bar and pulls himself until his chin is level with the bar. He raises himself through 40 cm in 0.5 seconds. The weight of the boy is 500 Newton. What is the average power he produces as he raises himself? Power is given as rate of work done. Here the boy raises himself. Raises himself means he is doing some work against gravitational field. So there will be an increment in the gravitational potential energy. So we can write power will be equal to gravitational potential energy over time. Now here in this formula mgh, this m represent mass, g for gravitational field strength and h for height. m multiplied by g, it is called weight. So here we can say power will be equal to weight into h divided by t. Now here weight of the boy is given 500 Newton, so W will be equal to 500, H is given 40 centimeter, but here we have to convert this centimeter into meter, so we will divide 40 by 100, we will get 0.4. Here time is given 0.5, so just by solving we will get the answer 400 watt, 400 watt is given in B, so correct option is B. Question number 13, the diagram shows a deep reservoir formed by a dam. On what does the pressure X depend? Pressure exerted by a liquid is given as P is equal to rho G H, where P for pressure, rho for density, G for gravitational field strength and H for height or we can say this H is the distance from the surface of the liquid to the point where we have to find out the pressure. So this depth is called height or it is represented by alphabet H. Now we check the option, option A, the depth of the water at X. Yes, it is correct, pressure depends on depth. So definitely correct option will be option A. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन द कंडीशन ऑफ अ सैंपल ऑफ गैस चेंज इन टू स्टेजेस स्टेज वन इंक्रीज ऑफ टेम्परेचर एट कॉन्स्टेंट वॉल्यूम स्टेज टू इंक्रीज ऑफ वॉल्यूम विद नो फर्दर चेंज ऑफ टेम्परेचर विच रो अबाउट द प्रेशर आफ्टर ईच स्टेज इज करेक्ट इन स्टेज वन इंक्रीज ऑफ टेम्परेचर एट कॉन्स्टेंट वॉल्यूम एट कॉन्स्टेंट वॉल्यूम विद द इंक्रीज इन टेम्परेचर प्रेशर विल बी इंक्रीज एज पर प्रेशर लॉ सो प्रेशर विल बी इंक्रीज विद द इंक्रीज इन टेम्परेचर In stage two, temperature is constant, so it will obey Boyle's law. And according to Boyle's law, pressure and volume are inversely proportional to each other. So here we can say, with the increase in volume, pressure will be decrease. So in stage one, pressure will be increase. Increase in given C and D, so possible option will be C and D. And in stage two, pressure will be decrease with the increase in volume. and decreases is given in option c so definitely correct option is option c question number 15 is small pollen particles are suspended in water when viewed with a microscope the pollen particles can be seen to be moving about irregularly what causes this movement this movement is because of the strike of water particles with the pollen particles now we check the options option a the pollen particles are being bombarded by the heavier particle yes first part is correct the pollen particles are bombarded but not by the heavier particle it will be lighter particle so, so a is incorrect in b it is given the pollen particles are being bombarded by the lighter particle of water yes it is correct pollen particles are heavier as compared to water particle so definitely correct option will be option b question number 16 the diagram shows a liquid in glass thermometer which physical property of the thermometer is used to measure temperature option a expansion of glass option b expansion of liquid option c mass of glass and option d mass of liquid In thermometer, in glass thermometer, we measure the temperature with the help of increment of the liquid that is inside the bulb. So here we can say our correct option will be option B, expansion of the liquid that will move inside the bulb of this thermometer. So correct option is option B. Question number seventeen. A block of lead of mass 500 gram is at its melting point. The specific latent heat of fusion of lead is 23 kJ per kg. How much energy is required to completely melt the block? To find out amount of energy, amount of heat, we will use the formula Q is equal to m into L, where m for mass and L for specific latent heat of fusion. Mass is given 500 gram, but this one we have to convert in kilogram. So mass will be equal to 500 over 1000. Now here specific latent heat is given 23 kilojoule per kilogram. First we have to convert this value from kilojoule to joule. So we have to multiply this 23 by 1000, and just by solving we will get the answer 11,500. That is approximately equal to 12,000 joule, and 12,000 joule is given in B. So correct option option B. Question number eighteen: A glass contains an ice ring on a warm and humid day. Water starts to form on the outside of the glass. What is the name of the effect by which the water forms? Water vapors outside the glass. It will strike with the outer wall of the container and transfer their energy to this ice ring, and it will be condensed as a water droplet. And this phenomena. This effect is called condensation. So our correct option will be option A, condensation. Question number nineteen: One end of a copper bar is heated to a high temperature. Which mechanism is responsible for the transfer of thermal energy to the other end of copper bar? Option A: the lattice vibrations of copper ions only. option b the lattice vibration of copper ions and movement of high energy electrons along the bar here correct option is option b it is a copper bar it is heated at the one end copper 
is a solid when it is a solid definitely it will have atoms ions or molecule that will vibrate at their mean position and because of the vibration they will transfer their energy to the adjacent ion or to the adjacent atom or to the adjacent molecule copper is a metal in metal we have free electron so these free electron can move from one place to another and while moving from one place to another they will conduct they will carry heat energy so in a copper bar energy can be transferred because of the vibration of the copper ions and also because of the movement of high energy electron along the bar so correct option will be option b question number 20 four cubic copper containers are filled with water the surfaces of all the containers are painted black two of the containers have sides of length 20 cm and other two containers have sides of length 40 cm two of the container contains water at 80 degree centigrade and the other two contain water at 30 degree centigrade which container radiates energy at the lowest rate at the lowest rate first thing the object that has lesser energy that has lesser temperature will radiate lesser energy so here the lesser energy will be radiate either in a or in c now second thing the object that is smaller will radiate lesser energy so here we can say the correct option should be option a because in comparison of all the four boxes the minimum temperature is 30 that is in a and also in comparison of all the boxes the smallest size is of a so the least energy will be radiate in the block that is given in option a so correct option will be a question number 21 the diagram shows a wave which row is correct in first column for the amplitude what is amplitude amplitude is a vertical distance from mean position to peak position of the wave now this amplitude this distance is 1 so our correct option will be a and b now what about the wavelength wavelength is a distance in between two consecutive crest or in between two consecutive trough or the distance is starting from one crest to the end of first trough so here we can say the wavelength will be the distance from this point 0 to this 8 so wavelength is 8 and amplitude is 1 and it is given in B so correct option is B question number 22 the water wave shown has a frequency of 4 Hertz what is the speed of the wave to find out the speed of the wave we will use the formula velocity is equal to frequency into wavelength now frequency is given 4 Hertz what about the wavelength it is the wave in this wave starting from this point up to this point the distance is given 36 cm what is wavelength wavelength is a distance in between two consecutive crests or in between two consecutive trough starting from this point to this point here we have complete three wave so here wavelength will be 36 divided by 3 it will be 12 so velocity will be equal to 4 frequency is 4 and wavelength will be this distance 36 divided by 3 and by solving we will get 48 centimeter per second now 48 centimeter per second is c so correct option will be option c question number 23 a student uses one eye to look at images in a plane mirror objects are placed on the line xy it is the line xy which objects give rise to images that can be seen by the eye at E? It is I. Here at this point we have I and we want to see all these objects. It is asked out of these all, the, all these objects, which object can be seen when our eye is at this point. We can see the object if the ray that starts from the object after striking with the mirror if it will come in our eyes then we can see the object 
if it will not come in our eyes then we cannot see the object now we check one by one all the object first we check this p from the p a ray will be started and obeying the laws of reflection it will be reflected now when it will be reflected it will not reach in our eyes so we cannot see the object p now we check q for q after reflection rays is coming in our eye so we can see the object q what about r r, r can also be seen because after reflection the rays are reaching in our eyes now we check s s can be seen t it can also be seen but u again it cannot be seen because the ray after the reflection it will not reach in our eyes so which object we can see q r s and t q r s and t it is given in option b so correct option option b question number 24 an object is placed in front of a converging lens of focal length 15 cm which row describes the image of the object here we have a convex lens and and in this convex lens the focal length is 15 cm focal length is 15 cm means the focal point is at a distance of 15 cm from center of this lens now what will be the double of this uh, focal length it will be 30 cm so here we can say 2f will be equal to 30 cm and f will be equal to 15 cm now here in first case the object is placed at a distance of 40 cm from the lens 40 cm means it is kept beyond 2f 2f is 30 this object is placed beyond 2f and when an object is placed beyond 2f the image form is real inverted and diminished here it is given real but here it is given upright it should not be upright it will be inverted so a is incorrect now we check this b here it is 30 30 means we have placed the object at a distance of 2f when we place an object at a distance of 2f the image form is real inverted and equal in size here it is given virtual inverted and enlarged so b is also incorrect now we check this c in c the object is placed at a distance of 20 cm 20 cm means it is placed in between f and 2f and when an object is placed in between f and 2f the image is formed real inverted and enlarged real inverted and enlarged but here it is given diminished so c is also incorrect now we check the last option d option and d the object is placed at a distance of 10 cm from this lens at a distance of 10 cm means it is kept in between f and lens and when an object is placed in between principal focus and lens the image is formed on the same side and this image is virtual upright and enlarged here it is given virtual upright and enlarged so definitely our correct option option d question number 25 the speed of light in air is 3 to 10 power 8 meter per second the critical angle for light in a transparent plastic material placed in air is 37 degree what is the speed of light in the plastic material to calculate the speed of light in the plastic we will use the formula sin c is equal to velocity of light in the medium here medium is plastic so we can write velocity of light in the medium or in the plastic divided by velocity of light in air now here this c this critical angle it is given 37 degree so it will become sin 37 velocity of light in plastic we have to calculate velocity of light in air it is given 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second so by solving we will get the answer 1.8 into 10 power 8 meter per second and the same value is given in a so correct option is option a question number 26 which part of the electromagnetic spectrum is used by a remote controller for a television for remote controller of a television we use infrared this topic we have studied 
in electromagnetic spectrum. So here we have to use infrared. Uh, infrared is given in A. So correct option is A. Question number 27. Which statement correctly compares radio waves and X-rays? Option A. Radio waves have a longer wavelength and a greater speed in a vacuum. First thing we should remember that radio waves and X-rays both are electromagnetic waves and for electromagnetic waves in vacuum or in air they will have the same velocity, they will have the same speed. So here in option A it is given has a greater speed in a vacuum, it is incorrect. It will always be same. For radio waves and X-rays the speed will be same. Now if we check it is the wavelength, it is radio wave, it is X-rays. For radio waves wavelength is more, wavelength is larger as compared to X-rays. So here we can say both X-rays and radio waves will have the same speed but the wavelength of the radio wave will be larger as compared to X-rays. So A is incorrect where it is given that it has a greater speed in a vacuum. Now in B, radio waves have a longer wavelength, yes it is correct, and the same speed in a vacuum, yes both are electromagnetic waves so both will have the same speed and this speed is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second. So correct option is B, radio waves have a longer wavelength as compared to X-rays and the speed is same as of speed of X-rays. Question number 28. The diagram shows the magnetic field around three objects P, Q and R placed close to each other. Which row shows the nature of each of the objects? It is very clear from the picture that P is a magnet. R is a magnet because here we have magnetic lines of force. In between P and R we kept an object Q and this Q is neither attracted nor repelled in between these two magnets P and R. So here we can say this Q is a non-magnetic material. Now if we check the option, in option A for Q it is given copper, in B copper, in C iron, in D iron. It is discussed that it is a non-magnetic material. So it cannot be iron, it should be copper. Now copper is given in A and B so possible option will be A and B. Now if we check here in P and in R on this side the waves are moving. These waves are moving starting from this point and it is coming to this end. It is starting from this point and coming to this end. Means these two rays are not attracted by each other. Since there is no attraction, so definitely there will not be opposite pole. There should be same poles. Now if we check A and B in A, in P and R, on these two ends opposite poles are given. Whereas in B we have same poles. So our correct option should be option B. This Q should be a non-magnetic material. So it will be copper rod. And since in P and R the rays are not attracted towards each other, so there should be same pole, there should not be opposite pole. In opposite pole they will be attracted. Since there is no attraction, so pole will be same. And here we have observed that in B on these two sides poles are same. So our correct option should be option B. Question number 29. A negatively charged rod is brought near an uncharged metal sphere that is placed on an insulating stand. Which diagram shows the distribution of charges on the sphere? It is a metallic sphere. Metallic sphere means it will have free electrons. It is negatively charged rod. Now this negatively charged rod will repel the free electron that are present in the metal sphere. So all the electrons will move toward this side. When electrons will move toward this side, then close to this say charge rod, positive charge will be developed. So on this metal sphere, close to this negatively charged rod, positive charge will be developed and on the opposite face, negative charge will be developed. As shown in option B, 
on this side positive charge will be developed on this side negative charge will be developed so correct option is b question number 30 a resistor has a potential difference of 12 volt across it and the current is 0.6 ampere in it what is the resistance of the resistor here we use ohm's law ohm's law is v is equal to i r so r will be equal to v over i now v is given 12 i is 0.6 by solving we will get 20 ohm so resistance is 20 ohm and 20 ohm is given in d so correct option is d question number 31 there is a current i in a resistor of resistance r for a time t the potential difference pd across the resistor is v which equation gives the power p dissipated in the resistor power is given as rate of work done rate of work done means work done divided by time in terms of electricity work done is equal to v into q where v for voltage q for charge so p will be equal to vq over t now q over t charge over time it is called electrical current and represented by i so power will be equal to vi and power is equal to iv or vi it is given in c so correct option is c question number 32 the four circuits shown each contain four diodes in which circuit is the direction of the current in the resistor always from the red terminal to the black terminal first we check this option a in option a let us consider the current is moving toward this node when the current will reach at this node it has two path either it can go on this path or it can go on this path since here we have a reverse bias diode so current will not pass through this path it will move through this path so current will move here now when the current will reach at this node again it can travel on this path or it can travel on this path but here again we have a reverse bias diode so current will not move on this path current will move on this path towards the red terminal and when it will reach at the red terminal it has no other path to move it will go from red to black terminal through this resistor so in this case current will always pass from red to black terminal so this one will be our correct option what is given in the other option if we check this one in b when the current will reach at this node it will move toward this path because here we have forward bias diode whereas here we have a reverse bias diode so it will stop the current on this path so this option is incorrect in c when the current will reach at this node it can move toward this path because here we have a forward bias diode when it will reach at this point now it has two path either it can move on this path or it can move on this path here we have a forward bias diode so current can pass through this one so we cannot assure that current will always pass through the red terminal so this option is incorrect in d again when the current will reach at this path the current will move through this path because here we have a forward bias diode whereas here we have a reverse bias diode so current will be stop on this path so current can only flow from red to black terminal in option a so correct option is a question number 33 The diagram shows a battery connected to a potential divider and two lamps P and Q. These are the two lamps P and Q and here we have a potential divider. The slider on the potential divider is moved from end X to end Y of the resistor. Which row shows the effect to the brightness of each lamp? Here we have one lamp P here Q. in p there will be no change there will be no effect because of potential divider because that when the current will reach at this node it will pass through this lamp there will be no effect because of this potential divider so for the brightness of p there will be no change it will remain unchanged and unchanged is given in c and d so c or d will be our possible option now we check about q when we move from x to y when we move from x to y it means we are increasing the resistance when we will increase the resistance means here the current flow will be decrease and current flow through this lamp will be increase so here this lamp will be more brighter and brighter is given in c so correct option will be option c 
क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी फोर वॉट इज द ट्रूथ टेबल फॉर द लॉजिक गेट शोन बाय द सिंबल दिस सिंबल दिस सिंबल रिप्रेजेंट नैन गेट नैन इज कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ एंड एंड नॉट गेट नाउ वी चेक वन बाय वन इन ऑप्शन ए फॉर टू इनपुट फॉर एक्स एंड वाई इन फर्स्ट रो इट इज गिवन जीरो जीरो इट इज एन एंड गेट इन द एंड गेट टू इनपुट आर जीरो देन आउटपुट विल ऑल्सो भी जीरो and this output zero it will behave as an input for this not gate so for the not gate this input is zero output will be one and here in a in the first row it is given zero and zero for both inputs but for the final output it is written zero whereas here it is one so option a is incorrect in b again in the first row we are looking that output is zero then again b option is not the possible option in c in first row we are looking here it is 1 and also in d it is 1 so c and d are the possible option now we check second row in option c and also in option d in second row of option c one input is 0 and second input is 1 when one input is 0 and second input is 1 in and gate output will be zero and this output of and it will behave as a input for this not gate and output of this not gate will be one but here it is written zero so c is also not the possible option now only possible option is d in d in the second row when one input is zero and second one is one output will be zero and final output of the not gate will be 1 and here it is 1 so definitely our correct option will be option d okay we also check the third row and fourth row of uh, option d in d in the third row this first input it is 1 second is 0 so output of and will be 0 and this 0 will be input for this not gate and after not gate the output will be 1 here it is 1 now if we check the last row both input are one when both input are one output for and gate will be one and this one will behave as an input for this not gate and final output after not gate here it is zero and here also it is zero so it is confirmed that our correct option is option d question number 35 a coil xy is wound around a cardboard tube when the south pole of the magnet is pushed into the coil xy the galvanometer deflects to the left what other movement of the magnet will produce a deflection to the left first we check lenz law in lenz law we have studied that when we bring a magnet towards a coil same poles are developed if here on the magnet it is north pole then on the coil on this side north pole will be developed if here we have south pole then here south pole will be developed if we are taking the magnet away from the coil then opposite poles are developed here in this case we are taking the magnet towards the coil and on the magnet here we have south pole so definitely here we should have a south pole and on y we should have a north pole now here in all the four cases a b c and d we have to check in which case same poles are developed where the same pole will be developed in that case the current will remain in the same direction otherwise the direction of the current will be changed now if we check option a here we are looking we have south pole of the magnet and we are taking the magnet away from the coil so definitely opposite pole should be developed at point x at point x north pole will be developed so at point y south pole will be developed now here in a the poles are different as the as the poles in the given case so definitely the direction of the current will be opposite as of this so a is not the possible option now we check b here we are looking we are taking the magnet away from the coil and on the magnet on this side we have north pole when we are taking the magnet away from the coil opposite poles are developed so definitely at point y south pole should be developed when south pole will be developed 
at x north pole will be developed again the poles are different as the given case so definitely direction of the current will not be same so b is also incorrect now we check c in c here we have north pole we are taking the magnet towards the coil so same pole should be developed on this side of the coil here it is not so on x north pole will be developed and on y south pole will be developed again here we are looking the poles are opposite as in the given case so again the direction of the current will be reverse it will not be seen now we check option d in option d here we have south pole and we are taking the magnet away from the coil since we are taking the magnet away from the coil so opposite pole will be developed on this face here it is south here it should be north when here it will be north on the opposite side it will be south now in d we are looking we have the same poles as the poles direction in the given case so here we have noticed in this given picture in this given case we have here south pole here north pole again in d we are looking here we have south pole here we have north pole so in both the cases direction of the current will be same other than this all in these three cases direction of the current will be opposite as the direction of the current in this case so definitely our correct option should be option d Question number 36 which transformer can change a 240 volt ac input into a 15 volt ac output we have studied a relation in the topic of transformer that voltage is directly proportional to number of turns or we can write voltage on the primary side divided by voltage on the secondary side is equal to number of turns on the primary side divided by number of turns on the secondary side now here first we calculate ratio of the voltage means we have to calculate vp over vs when we will calculate vp over vs we got 16 now in all the cases one by one we will calculate np over ns and where the np over ns value is same as 16 in that case we can say that with 240 volt ac input we will get 15 volt ac output so one by one we will check first we will check option a in option a number of turns on the primary side is 800 on secondary side it is 40 so 800 over 40 it is 20 both values are not same so definitely this one will not be our possible option in b here it is 1000 it is 25 we got 40 so this one is also not the option in c 2400 divided by 15 we got 160 it is also not the possible option definitely correct option will be option d when we will divide 1200 by 75 we got 16 and this value is same as the ratio of vp over vs that is calculated before so we will get 15 ac output by 240 volt ac in option d in case d so correct option is d Question number 37 the diagram shows a current carrying wire in a magnetic field in which direction is the force on the wire here we have wire in this wire we have electrical current this wire is placed in between a magnetic field it is north pole it is south pole in which direction is the force we have to find out the resultant force now with the help of fleming's left hand rule we can easily find out that the direction of the resultant force is towards the bottom of the page it will be in the downward direction so correct option should be option a question number 38 a scientist was asked to separate the following equation into two categories nuclear fission and nuclear fusion which equation shows nuclear fission fission means splitting of a nucleus into smaller nuclei and fusion means union of two or more than nucleus into one bigger nucleus now in number 1 plutonium is splitting into smaller nuclei so this one is fission in two two helium nucleus are joining together to form helium nucleus again along with two hydrogen atom 
so this one is not fission this one is fusion in number 3 nitrogen and hydrogen are combined together to form oxygen so this one is again fusion not fission in 4 uranium is splitting into krypton and barium and also we are getting two neutron so in 1 and in number 4 a nucleus is splitting into smaller nuclei so number 1 and 4 are fission reaction 1 and 4 are given in option C so correct option will be option C question number 39 which radioactive source is used in a smoke alarm system and what is the reason for this in a smoke alarm system we use americium because americium is the source of alpha particle and why it is used because it causes most ionization of air so definitely our correct option will be option b source is alpha particle and reason because it causes most ionization of air question number 40 a beam of alpha particle and beta particle is incident at right angles to an electric field which statement about the deflection of the particle in the field is correct alpha particle are positively charged so positively charged particle will be deflected towards the negatively charged electrode towards the negatively charged plate whereas beta particle are negatively charged particles so it will be deflected toward the positively charged electrode or positively charged plates now if we check the options in A it is given alpha particle deflects but beta particle do not deflect. It is incorrect both alpha and beta particle deflect but gamma particle gamma rays do not deflect. Gamma rays are electromagnetic waves they are not deflected to positively charged plate or negatively charged plate they move straight. Whereas beta is deflected towards the positively charged rod positively charged plate and alpha particle will be deflected towards the negatively charged plate or negatively charged rod. So definitely A is incorrect where it is given beta particle do not deflect. In B it is given alpha particle deflect in the opposite direction of beta particle. Yes it is correct both alpha and beta particle deflect but their direction are opposite to each other. One is attracted towards the negatively charged plate second is attracted towards the positively charged plate. So correct option is B. Now we have completed all the questions from this paper. So thank you very much.